gets a lot of credit. Like in the underground two pound world, a lot of guys know him and like we'll roll up, people will be, oh my God, that's Travis Potter. You know, in the mainstream, people might know him, but in the underground two pound world, he's definitely like idolized. I started going over there to Indo right out of high school, 97, when I started doing serious time over there. Timmy started coming over a lot, and then Brett traveled with Mikala. I think, you know, like, Indonesia to Travis was everything, you know? He spoke the language perfectly. He adapted to the culture. Never really had a plan sometimes. We would just document and then compile stuff for a couple seasons, and then it's like, oh, we could link this up together and it would, it would kind of tell a storyline. With Second Thoughts, it was a bit more planned out, you know, of like, okay, we're gonna go camp out. I met Travis Potter. In 1999, we made Burning the Map. And then the second movie was called The Ombok. We went on our first boat trip and it cost us so much money. For Second Thoughts, Travis said, we're not gonna be able to pay all this money. Travis actually got like 4.0 GPA all through high school, started going to college, and then looking at him, I was like, oh, this is like the smartest guy I know. He's gonna be like a millionaire, like probably own a tech company, and yeah, he just does a 180 and goes feral into the jungle. <laughs> I think he got to a point where he's like, you'd rather go hunt barrels in perfect ways with no one around. I think he started going feral because there's a lack of uh, money in his bank account. <laughs> Ended up linking up doing an Indo trip together and then it just became another trip, another trip, longer trips. We'd go for a month and then the next season we'd go for like three and then six and keep it going. He's always had like unique concepts and ideas for trips and he's knowledgeable, smart, always wondering like what's around that corner, oh the direction's this way, let's go over there, like. You know, we're young and traveling on nothing really like saving up a little bit of money or just cash advances out of the credit card at the time we all had a little travel fund that would basically cover our plane ticket you know we'd come home and just all of us would work and save up as much we could or pay off our credit card debts after the twin towers went down and we were we were over there when it happened and didn't even find out about it until you know a week or so and didn't even see the video for at least a month. U.S. got involved with the attack in foreign countries and it had its backlash. They were doing some sweeping and we had to hide out in hotels and they were trying to kick us out of the country. And I think at the time we didn't really realize that we could have got ourselves in trouble, you know, just kind of being young and ignorant to the world's problems and, and uh, kind of looking back on it, that if we'd have tried to confront the situation, you know, it would have gotten worse quick. We found out what happened when we got to the island from a buddy, Dustin Humphrey, went to the boat and said, hey, this is what's going on right now. Brett Schwartz got a picture with Bin Laden, you know, on a bus, just a uh, Taliban. That photo I was showing you was over those few years we were filming Second Thoughts and uh, there was quite a bit of animosity towards the U.S. Kind of got in some areas that we weren't really wanted. I grew up hunting and fishing and Timmy and Brett as well grew up, you know, camping and being self-reliant with their families and so we, we all had that in common. And sometimes we had no food or sometimes we were eating the best meals ever. We kept going out for longer and longer trips. Instead of bringing out boxes and things and meat doesn't last and so we would bring live chickens and brought the, the goat. It didn't seem like too big of a thing at the time. It was just, you're actually killing something for food in front of your face, or if you're hunting, you know, you do have that appreciation that that animal's giving its life unwillingly for you to survive. It was pretty much a gnarly experience. Like, that 10 minutes after we did it, me, Travis, and Brett, we weren't normal. When we started taking the filming thing a little more serious, it was, Timmy, Timmy was the one who went and bought all the gear and was like, okay, well, let's let's go put in the time and, and do this. And uh, yeah, we were we were kind of just collecting footage and because uh, we would see waves that we weren't seeing documented. Now looking back, it's a bit of a double-edged sword because then you're 
you know, showing people the ways that you want to survive by yourself. The camping thing was his idea, the camera shots, you know, all that crazy angles, his idea. Like, if you know Travis, he was really good at barrel riding and working with photographers and getting shots. He's always had like unique concepts and ideas for trips and to make all these weird housings. It was his theory to like strap the camera on the, the reef and they had all this underwater footage of them just surfing past it. Yeah, they're doing all this like POV stuff with PC-1000, that little Sony camera. And T Timmy made the movie, but it was Travis's like, hey, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, you know. We started experimenting with the camera angles and wanting to get stuff that people hadn't seen and kind of trying to follow Greeno's steps and filming inside the barrel. We were doing all our own filming at that time and just trading off. Sometimes someone would sit on the beach, film, and take turns surfing and experimenting with board cam, holding it, and you know, that was, it was all pre, you know, modern day stuff that's this big, so you're big, cameras and housings and having them hit you in the face. Travis has been thinking about angles and shots in a point of view for for years. Yeah, way before the GoPro came out. I owe Travis a lot of, like, like I piggybacked off that guy his whole life, you know? <laughs> From shooting to barrels to finding waves. Like, I didn't even find a wave, I'd just go with Travis. You'll find them, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you, you, you think about your own mortality for sure when you do that kind of travel, whether you're willing to put yourself in those situations that could take your life from you. No, I don't have no there. A lot of the places where we were going, like, there was no reception and stuff. You just kind of like, hey, if we're not back in three days, maybe wait another day or two and then... <laughs> I've always been the one to get bit by mosquitoes a lot. I can't really pinpoint any time that I can say it was like oh that's when I got bit. I got sick about two weeks after a trip and uh, it came on really quick and really hard. It goes to your brain right it's falsy parum so it goes ends up going in your brain you end up you know you got high fever for a long time and ended up in the hospital for two weeks or something but it, it really affects your brain for you know another six months a year afterwards just being on edge and anxiety and kind of just not trusting people in the world and does its toll on your on your mind for sure psychologically it's like being on a really bad trip for a year the side effects they just uh are really mental when timmy got staff on on his brain they ended up having to cut part of his skull out and replace it with a synthetic piece you know he's really lucky to be alive from that where is travis potter that's a normal question. So Travis is always floating. So I managed a beer company in Bali for a little while. Travis was in Papua New Guinea the last couple of years helping refugees. His job was to like take them paddle boarding or help them, you know, because they're good people, they're seeking asylum. Then he started doing a lot of fishing trips. He's always talked about getting his captain's license. I think he's accomplished that now. And He's always said he's going to get his captain's license, so he finally did it. For the last 15 years or something, I've kind of been, all right, I'm going to get my captain's license and head off and, you know, explore waves. It's taken me a lot longer than a lot of people just because I, in my head, I need to go get barrel. The only way he goes on trips is he pulls his nine to five and saves some money and then pulls the trigger on that swell. <laughs> I'm sure he wants to go back and just talk about, oh, you see that swell on the map? <laughs> 180 hours out, what do you think? I'm like, you're not going anywhere, guy. Like, why are we even talking about this? He's working on a boat and they're going down to Baja for like three weeks or something. That's where Travis Potter is. <laughs> I have that need to be on the water. And if I can't be in the water surfing, I need to be in the water doing something else. <laughs> so it's, why not? do something that I can make money and be on the water.